balanced versus unbalanced cables. Great subject. Let's get to it. Tom in Durham, North Carolina. Tell me what the difference between a balanced and an unbalanced cable is and what are the advantages of each? Ah. Near and dear to my heart. First off, let me be clear. I like balanced and I recommend anybody using our products to go balanced with with few exceptions. And I think the only exception is our little Sprout integrated amplifier, which does not have balance. But other than, than Sprout, every product we make has a balanced in and out. And it's true balance, which I will explain in a minute. So let's, let's look and see what are the differences. The standard consumer interface is RCA unbalanced, and, and, and you've seen that. I, um, gosh darn it, I should have something here to show you, some kind of uh, connector. Well, here, let's, I can show you this. Sorry, I wasn't quite prepared for this. So, that's a plug. <laughs> All right, hang on. We're getting closer. There. All right. So this guy is, is a balanced connector, and you've seen it. It's got the three prongs over here, uh, and we should have some RCA ones here somewhere. Well, anyway, it looks more like this. This is a 3.5 millimeter plug. Sorry. Should have been prepared, but you know which ones I mean. It has the, the RCA connector has the, the single hot lead and... Um, and the, the outer shell. So RCA, I'm not even sure how that got that name, but anyway, the, the single-ended is basically a, a ground and a hot. And a balanced is two hots and a ground plus a shield, okay? So you actually have um, four connections in a balanced cable and you only have two in an RCA connector. So let, let me explain the, the difference between that. So in an RCA, we have what we call the hot lead, which is your, your center, and then around it you have the little dingus that plugs in, and that's, that is ground and the shield. So around the outside of your RCA cable is usually a, a mesh of metal that is intended to stop interference from external sources of hum and, uh, and noise, which we would normally call EMI, or electromagnetic interference. And it carries both the signal and ground and tries to get rid of any kind of noise. And that plugs into your system, and if it, if it is typical, that outer shell will be just shunted off and connected to ground. And then the only thing left is the hot lead, which is where the signal is rising. Now this is what most of us wind up using. It's not the best. And the reason is because it, despite the outer shield, it isn't great for eliminating noise. Also, anything um, that is passed from the receiving unit or the sending unit to the receiving unit uh, goes through the cable and if anything is picked up along the way like noise or there's any distortion problems that are common um, along that cable you're you're not going to have any benefit of, a, of another thing that I will tell you about which is common mode rejection and common mode rejection is concerned on the balance cable so these balance cables, like I say, if you, if you, I don't know if you can see, there's, in here there's three, um, and there is a, a, a hot lead, two hot leads, one who's non-inverting, that means as the signal is going up and down like this, it's following exactly the way it was sent, and an inverting, which is now the opposite of that. So that between the two, as one is going up, the other is going down, and we have like that. And then the third prong is actually ground, a signal ground. And then out here, we have that sh same shield, that 
mesh shield that uh, we had on our RCA cable, but that is grounded separately through the shell um, and sometimes tied to the ground, depends on how it's wired. So this is a very low noise cable and it's well shielded and you have the two hot leads and the ground within it that are protected by the shield. Now, let's get to common mode rejection before this gets too long and I apologize for not being more um, prepared. Common mode rejection means that the circuit, which is typically either a transformer, an audio transformer, or a differential input amplifier, which is what we use, it will amplify only the differences between the two hot leads. Remember I said there was a hot, two hot leads, an inverting and a non-inverting? The, the non-inverting being the actual signal uh, in its proper polarity, and the inverting is the same signal but out of phase. So the difference between those two is what's amplified, and the difference as this one's going up, this one's going down, right? So now we have a difference, and it amplifies that. But here's where it gets really cool. If those two wires, your two hot signal wires, the inverting and non-inverting, pick up the same signal at the same time, like let's say there was a transformer close and it, it had hum that was coming in and both of them picked it up, which they're likely to do because they're all bundled within this one cable, right? They're all sitting here close together. And if I put that close to a, a source like Nipper, you know, putting out hum, they're both going to get the hum. My differential circuit on the other side is going to eliminate that hum because it pays no attention to anything that is common between the, the two hots. And if it's common, like if there were common distortion coming from the transmitting unit, or if there was a common noise picked up, like nipper's bad breath, um, it's going to ignore that and it will only amplify those differences and so that's a much cleaner signal much better sounding and that's why I always recommend balanced as opposed to unbalanced and the last part I'll tell you about is is about true balanced so a number of companies especially in low-cost products they will actually just use an inverting op amp at the output of their signal um, uh, at the output of their device to create that, that inverted signal, okay? It's not actually a balanced circuit. It's putting out a balanced signal, but it's not a balanced circuit. And then when it takes it in, you have this, this differential pair, which does help with common mode rejection, but then it's converted back to a single-ended signal. And that works, it absolutely works. It's not the best way to go. The best way to go is to have a fully balanced circuit feeding and a fully balanced circuit receiving and that's called true balanced which is what we do thank you for the question bye